Evolution Musketeer in a nutshell. Musketeer will be the next evolution coming to Clash Royale. It will be available in the Diamond Pass next season, so make sure to use God Abdude so I can buy Shadow Generations. Looking at the stats here, it's a two cycle evolution and has the same stats of the normal must. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. Another infinite. Really? So to get this straight to you, I cannot fit both troops on the screen at the same time. The musketeer can shoot stuff from the other side of the map, I would have to zoom the gameplay out like this to show for it. We are lucky that the range is just this pink column, so a giant on the other lane is pretty much safe from her attacks. We are also even more lucky that she has only 3 sniper bullets, so after 3 shots, she turns into a regular musketeer and has to walk to the giant normally. The pink circle around her feet is an indicator in which it shows that she has sniper bullets to use and would go away after she shoots all 3 bullets. As of right now, it doesn't change if she has 3 bullets or 1 bullet. The counter is only displayed on the troop she locks on, which I would say is not ideal. Personally, I wish the circle was a 3 part circle that would slowly vanish apart for each bullet she shoots, but I'm sure Clash Royale players can count to 3. Am I right guys? You might have noticed I was recording the previous clips with broken towers. Does that mean I can... Oh no. Yeah, no, she actually doesn't target towers, so we aren't really screwed. The damage on sniper bullets is higher than normal shots, allowing it to one-shot things like firecrackers, when a normal musketeer wouldn't really have pulled that off and would need two shots for it. The one-shotting stops at bomber, so that shows that the bullet deals a little bit less damage than arrows. But that's one bullet, and considering she has three, then combining those can deal insane damage to some troops. It can fully take out an electro dragon on its own, which is very impressive considering that the dude survives a poison. It doesn't kill an archer queen, so that kind of means that the three bullets combined are a little bit less damaged than lightning. The infinite range and the high damage makes it feel like a spell, which means you could combine it with other small spells to combo and take out specific troops. Zappies normally dies to arrows and any small spell. Because the musketeer has similar damage to arrows but less, you can't really play her and then zap as she wouldn't take them out with one bullet each. You could use log instead, the point I'm trying to make is basically treat it as a big spell and learn the interactions. And in case of a medium health troop, it's the same price to use evil musketeer or a poison but you get more damage and a free musketeer in exchange of the tower damage the poison does. Goblin curse is surprisingly a very good synergy because with it, the evil musketeer would deal rocket light damage to troops taking out executioner for 6 elixir while you get to keep a full HP musketeer. The damage is still less than rocket so don't expect to be taking out sparkies with it but anything below that is possible to take out. The most optimal lane to snipe troops in the back is this lane right here. If you play her behind the king tower, some fast troops would kind of miss her aim up which would make it easier for the enemy to tank for them and save their life. But if you play her on the tile I showed, then she would cover up pretty much the entire path of the enemy troop without any awkward getting out of range situation. The reason is because the range horizontally is a little more than one tile, so you can snipe troops one tile to the right or the left. A really cool trick you can do with this is that if they have a princess on the opposite side of your push, you can snipe it from the side of your push and have your musketeer walk behind your stuff to support them after it. Obviously, if they play their stuff on the corner, then you can't really use this lane I showed earlier. So you would have to use this placement instead as it would cover the same area but just on the opposite side. I find Evil Musky to be best used offensively like it's amazing against spawners as it would critically damage the buildings and the leftover musketeer would assist you in taking out the barbarians from the initial spawn wave and the death spawn wave. Although if you have slow reaction time, your musketeer will waste her shots on the spawn troops instead so I wouldn't risk it unless you got NASA Wi-Fi. A building that's way easier to snipe is the Elixir Collector, which is arguably one of the best Elixir trades in the game. Now, if you wanna save your pump, playing it behind the tower would make it easier to protect as your troops will just keep moving forward, covering for it for a long time. Playing it in the middle is a little bit awkward when it comes to tanking with the troops because they will just walk away. But if you wanna protect with Tornado, a middle position works better as you can just Tornado the Musketeer away, which if she gets one or less hits on your pump, 
you would save 5 elixir, so it's worth it. If your pump is behind the crown tower, then a tornado wouldn't work because she will walk back in range of it because of how the true pathing system works. It could work if you play the pump a bit far away, but personally I wouldn't risk it as they might push their musketeer with a cheap card or something. You also could use it to take out buildings for your hog rider or giant, and the closer you play it to the building, the faster you take out the building because of travel time. But that doesn't mean you should always play it as close as possible because if any other troops was in range of her normal shot, she doesn't prioritize the sniper shots. Instead, play her far in the back, so the only way to stop her would be to play something in the sniper range which is smaller and harder to keep troops inside. The only time where she would change her regular target and prioritize sniper shots over it is when she is targeting a tower, which I guess is a disadvantage. The reason I'm saying only time is because, for some reason, zapping or freezing her doesn't seem to retarget the sniper shots on other troops. Defensively, she's kinda mid because if you just play her in the back normally, then they can play skeletons or bats and have her waste all her ability on nothing. The infinite range also allows you to place the musketeer in the anti-void tile a little bit earlier as she wouldn't move for the first 5 seconds if there's something in range, so she would be dishing out DPS earlier as you don't have to wait to deploy it. Against graveyard you wanna place her in range of the skeletons not only because you would want to save your sniper ammo and not waste it on skeletons, but also because the sniper shots are slower, so she would be less effective for the first 4.5 seconds, resulting in more damage on your tower. And I guess it bullies expo like every new card in evolution does, but hey, I'm not complaining. SK is complaining though. And here's the new arena, the music I've been looping over this video is the music of the new arena, and I'm gonna be honest, this Wild West remix of the Clash Royale theme really slaps so hard. This card stinks because editing with infinite range was literally pain, cause like I can't show both the musketeer and the other stuff on the same screen my dudes.